thank everybody for being here. And um, I drove my car in this morning, and when I was coming in, the, the Pooter Fire Department was doing a climb in our stadium and um, just reminded me that it was September 11th and just would like to recognize all our first responders um, all over the country and people that sacrifice for us every day to keep us safe and all the families that lost loved ones in 9-11. Uh, for, for those of the, us that are of age, uh, we can all remember where we were that day. So just wanted to start with that. Um, we had a great bye week last week. It's unusual to have a bye week this time of year. Um, but it was really important for us. Uh, we got a chance to kind of change our schedule. We practiced at night. Uh, I wanted to do that for our players, uh, get them rested up and healthy, uh, but also just address some areas where we needed to improve. And I thought it was a great week for us to do that. Um, you know, uh, over the years, you see great improvement from game one and game two, and we really expect that from our kids. Um, it's obviously Colorado week, and it's a very exciting week around here for us. And, um, you know, just, just to start talking about Colorado, I, you know, Deion Sanders has had a lot of public critics. I'm not one of them. Um, I really respect all head coaches and the sacrifices that they've had to make to become head coaches. Um, and I appreciate the path that they have to go through to get there, and especially African-American coaches. And so I was happy to see Dion get his opportunity. Um, you know, I had to wait a long time to get mine. Um, you know, I was talking to Tim Cassidy the other day, but you know, I was a, I was a coordinator at Nebraska, some of the best schools in America, coordinator at Nebraska, UCLA. I called plays at Texas. I was a co-coordinator at Oklahoma. It took me a long time to get my opportunity as a head coach. And so I really value that, and I really respect other head coaches and, and the job that they do. And I'm really proud uh, to be able to re represent CSU and play in this game. You know, I told our kids this morning, what an amazing opportunity uh, uh, to play in this great rivalry and uh, we have two African-American coaches representing the schools in this state. And I think that's very unique, and I think it's, it, ha it holds a lot of weight. Um, and I'm really proud to be a part of that. Um, you know, this game is special. You know, the Rocky Mountain Showdown, there's so many things that go with this. Um, you know, the first meeting was 1893. You know, when you tell kids that, they're getting ready to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Uh, 91 times these two schools have met, playing for the Centennial Cup. Um, it means a lot to our players. Um, we have 29 Colorado kids on our roster. We have the most Colorado kids than any Division I team in America. And... Um, I think Wyoming has 23. I think CU, Colorado has 12. I think two of them are on scholarship. Um, but we have a lot of Colorado kids. It's really important to our program uh, to play this game. And it means a lot to the people in this community. It means a lot to our alumni. It means a lot uh, to our fans and our student body. Um, you know, obviously we know that uh, Colorado leads the all-time series, 67, 22, and two. Colorado's won the last five. You know, I reminded our players that there was a span in 1999 um, where Colorado State won three out of four years. And that was a pretty good time here at this university. And we remember that uh, as a program. I can't remember when game day and Big noon kickoff, we're in the same spot for one game. And so what that tells me of all those years of playing this Rocky Mountain showdown, this might be the most eyes that have ever been on this game. And I think that's a tremendous opportunity for us and our kids. Um, I was interested to see between 1998 and 2003, either CS, 
you or see you were ranked in this game and the ranked team lost all those games. And so, um, you know, share all this stuff with our players. It's important for them to be knowledgeable about the game, the history of the game. You know, and the last time this game was played in Boulders, CSU won 23-17. You know, I've been a part of a lot of rivalry games as a coach. I've, I've been really blessed as an assistant, you know, to coach in the Super Bowl with the Raiders, uh, be in the playoffs with the Colts. I've coached every BCS bowl game, but probably my favorite memories are the rivalry games. Um, I was part of the Red River rivalry for eight years, seven at Oklahoma, one at Texas. So I've been on both sides and I've won it on both sides. And there's not many people that can say that. You know, I just came from a great rivalry at Nevada uh, between Nevada and UNLV playing for the Fremont Cannon. There's one thing about rivalry games, you can kind of throw the record out. There's a lot of passion uh, in rivalry games. There's a lot of guys that play against each other that know each other. You know, this game is kind of unique because I think there's a lot of kids on both sides that have never played in it. So it's the first time that many of the CU players have played in this game, and it's the first time that many of our players have played in this game. So just really a unique opportunity um, for our kids. And um, this is what you play for. I mean, you come to school to play in these kind of games. Um, and, you know, when I was at OU, I never had to tell our players that their job was to beat Texas. They knew that that's what their job was. And our kids don't need to be told their job is to beat CU. So that's why they come to school here. Really, really excited about the, this opportunity. Um, you know, uh, as far as Colorado's concerned, um, you know, they've done a really good job. They played two games. Um, their offense has been really outstanding. Uh, they're playing at a high level, um, averaging 40 points a game, 510 passing. They're not running the ball very well, uh, only 56 yards uh, a game rushing. Um, you know, just really playing at a high percentage. Uh, and they've got good players. You know, I got to tell you, Shadur Sanders is an excellent quarterback. Um, and he's playing at a high level and, and obviously don't need me to recognize that. But he's playing at an extremely high level. I went back and went over with our team the keys to victory that we use for our program. And in the first two games, TCU and, and, and Nebraska, the game is basically dead even. And in a lot of ways, uh, TCU and Nebraska outplayed CU in a lot of areas of the game. Special teams, rushing the football, um, not giving up minus yardage plays and sacks. The one difference is in the game is the play of the quarterback in both of those games. Um, you know, Shadur threw for 510 the first week, threw for a bunch of yards last week. He's got an excellent group of receivers. Uh, I really think Xavier Weaver's a good player. Obviously, Travis Hunter uh, and a good running back in Dylan, Dylan Edwards. But that has been the, that's been the difference for them, is that their ability to throw the football for a high percentage and not turn it over. And um, obviously, that's going to be the key to the game for us. If we're going to be able to slow CU down, we've got to make it difficult for Shadur and slow those receivers down and manage that game and get off the field. We have to get off the field defensively. Um, you know, as far as their defensive concern, you know, their coordinator came from Alabama, had a chance to watch a lot of their games. It's a very unique front. It's more of a pro-style defense. Uh, they play some odd and even. They'll play with a jack and a star player that plays at the boundary majority of the time. Um, you know, and they'll move Travis Hunter around. Um, you know, they're, they're, they've given up some rushing yards. Both, both games, they've given up over 200 yards rushing. And um, the strength of their team is, is by far their secondary. Uh, Travis Hunter's a really unique player. Um, I've never seen anybody do what he's done so far in two games. Uh, the kid deserves a lot of credit. He's an excellent athlete and a great competitor. Um, 
you know, I really like uh, number 43, Trevor Woods, their free safety. I know he's a returning kid, but really a physical guy, good heady player. Uh, Marvin Ham's an excellent linebacker as well. Um, you know, this is going to be a really a, a fun football game. Um, you know, one of the things that we uh, did last week, we, we, we really worked on a lot of things. Um, and uh, in our, after our first game, we've made a decision. We're going we're gonna to give uh, Braden Fowler and Nicolosi an opportunity to play this week. He's going to start for us. Um, Clay Millen's a tremendous player for us. Um, he's going to be an important player for us the rest of this season. But we just felt like it was an opportunity for, for Braden to play. Clay got banged up a little bit in our last game. And uh, I just didn't want to put him back out there uh, in the middle of that game with the state that he was in. Um, and Braden came in and played well. You know, the bottom line is we got to score touchdowns and we got to score points offensively. When you play against good football teams, you know, you have to, you have to sustain drives and you got to make plays. And um, so we're going to give Braden an opportunity. You know, I told Clay, you know, a lot of the, that game, I took responsibility for the Washington State game. You know, one of the things as a team you have to do, learn how to do, is not beat yourself. And I probably leaned on that a little bit too much in that first game. Uh, thought we could slow them down a little bit better. And, uh, but I played a little close to the vest. And we really want to get back to playing our style of football. And since, since we got here, we really haven't been able to do that offensively for different reasons last year. I think we have a really talented group of kids that we can play with. And we're, we're going to turn them loose and let them play. Um, you know, the history of this game, I've got a chance to meet a bunch of our alumni, a bunch of guys that played here in the late 90s and early 2000s, and, um, and obviously Coach Lubick. Um, the history of this game is respect. It's just respect. And, um, you know, to quote Bradley Van Pelt, you know, this game is about our players earning respect. And so that's what we got to go do. We got to go play and we got we to play well. And, and uh, I'm really excited for our football team. I'm really excited for our, our program. And I'm excited for our kids that they get this opportunity to play this game. And, and then it's a meaningful game. So. What did you see last week with Braden taking most of the reps at one that kind of helped you make this decision that he'll start this week? You know, Braden's a good football player. Braden, um, you know, got a chance to play as a two freshman. He won a big game for us on the road last year. He's got a lot of tremendous skills. He can move, he can run, he can throw. Um, and he's gained a lot of confidence. Um, you know, what I told our quarterbacks is we need guys that can lead. We, got, we need guys that compete their tails off and lead. And, um, you know, you watch, you watch games all over college football. You know, to, to play and win big games, you gotta, you got to have that competitiveness at that position. It's got to lead your football team. And, and I think that's the biggest thing our kids needed to grow up in their maturity is their leadership ability. And I think we got good leaders. I think Clay's a good leader. I think Clay is a tremendously talented guy. And we're going to need both of those guys. But I just felt like the timing was right for, for Braden to get his opportunity. And he came in and played well, you know, the second part of that game. He threw some touchdown passes, gave some get guys a chance to make some plays down the field. And, you know, it's my job and, and our quarterbacks to get the ball our playmakers. We got good players. We got Torrey, uh, you know, we got – an excellent tight end, you know, and Dallin Hoker, the play he made in the, in the end zone was special. Um, you know, Justice is a, can make big plays. Lewis Brown can make big plays. I call him Lewis. I don't call him LB. But, I mean, all those kids can make plays. And so we got to get them the ball. We got to get their hands on it and give them an opportunity to be involved in a game. And so it's, uh, it's our job to do that. And, you know, n nobody can shirk responsibility. I mean, when a team doesn't play – play well it falls on me I mean we didn't play well enough and so um, you know I'm not blaming Clay by any means he's a good player he's going to help us win games this year 
Uh, but we just felt like it was uh, Braden's time to get an opportunity. It just felt like in that game when Braden came in, he took a more aggressive approach to getting the ball more downfield. Was that part of it? And I think it was partly. It was partly the game too. I mean, we were behind and we had to do that. Um, you know, and it kind of got away from us there in the middle of the game uh, with the turnovers, especially. But you know, and, and and Washington State's a good football team. You see what they did to Wisconsin, and and that's a good pass rush. Those two defensive ends are excellent college players, and so. You know, we, we, we needed to manage that. I mean, we had a bunch of sacks against Washington State a year ago. We're, we're doing better in many areas. You know, we've, we've limited our penalties. We've limited our minus yardage plays. Want to run the ball a little bit better. And that's going to be important in this game, that we run the ball well. Um, so we're making progress. You know, we got 11 games left. You know, I showed our kids the Mountain West standings. We're the only team in the Mountain West to play one game. We got our whole football season in front of us, and I'm excited about what we can do with these kids. It, we got a good group of kids in that locker room, and I'm excited to see them play and grow. Last year, uh, when all four quarterbacks got a little bit of time, you, you kind of said that you thought it would help them down the road. Yeah. Does that make it that you know this change is kind of more possible that Braden got some time last yeah, year? Yeah, I think I think it gives him more confidence, and I think it gives his teammates confidence. Um, you know, that he can go play on the road and win in a hostile environment. You know, he, he took us to Nevada last year. It was a, you know, a lot of things went with that game and it was a hostile game in a lot of ways. Um, you know, and, and he didn't play great, but he competed his tail off and he drove us down the field in a two minute drill to win the game. And so he made important plays when he needed to make it. And so, I'm excited about Braden. His teammates are excited about him getting a chance to play. And we got to rally around whoever's playing quarterback. You know, that was one thing we talked as a team today. You know, let's rally around Braden and let's let's help him be great. And we think he can help us win and he's excited to play. And, um, you know, I, I think he's looking forward to this opportunity. Prior to that Washington State game, you had mentioned um, that you guys had a couple of plays that you really liked. No, I mean, I think, I think we have a style of football we want to play, and and we got to keep pushing till we get it. You know, we made some improvements in that game, and we we scored on some long plays and some drives, and and, and in spurts it looks like what it's supposed to, but we're it's not there yet. And and we're you know, and and I said something to Joe after the game. I mean, we just need a breakthrough game. Sometimes you just got to have a breakthrough and you got to beat somebody in a tough game and and all of a sudden the floodgates start opening up and 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 that happened to us at Nevada it's happened to us other places and we just need that you know we got to keep banging on the door till it, till it opens up and the one thing i have confidence in is we have good players um, we got we have skilled players that can make plays um, we got to get them the ball we got to distribute the ball and um, and we got to go play free and easy, and, and so that's what we plan on doing. Is Clay healthy enough to address this week, or is it, I'm just asking, could he go in the game this week? If he yeah, to? he definitely could, and and he's practicing, and, and he's getting prepared, and he's excited to play. He's a competitive kid, kid, and, you know, he wants to see us win more than anybody, and so I'm, I'm you know, and I told I told those guys in that room, we need them all. We need them all to be prepared to play, and and uh, and Clay knows he's a snap away, and he's preparing like he's starting this game, and he may have to come in and play. When you watch CU play, you, talk, you touched on their offense and how explosive, but they've done a really good job of getting their outside playmakers in space, allow them to make plays. Defensively, how do you kind of counteract that? What worries you most? Yeah, I think I think the big thing is that you know you gotta you gotta make a rhythm passer get out of rhythm and um, you know there's a couple different ways to do that you play tight coverage and you get you pressure the passer you know and I mean I know we're in, in Colorado I mean Al Davis used to say he's got to get hit and he's got to get hit early and so you know but the, he's a very good athlete and and they spread out the field and uh, he's done a good job and so we got to get him off schedule and we got to get off the field on third down and and, um, 
you know, that's important. He's been in real rhythm the first two weeks, and we got to do something to disrupt that defensively. And, you know, our pass rush has got to get involved. You know, we feel like we have guys that can cover. We're going to have to get in their hip pocket more and take away some of the air in, 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 the, in those receivers' passing game and, and challenge and disrupt them as well. So, you know, that's our challenge. And, uh, you know, he's been able to, to really play in rhythm the first two games, and we got to disrupt that. The other half of that is if you keep them off the field by extending drives, which for the first half of your first game, you weren't able to get that. You finished one yard short first on third down. Right. Play. How much pressure is kind of on your offense to help the defense this week? I mean, I, complimentary. We, we, we need to score points. I mean, I mean the, the reality is we got to score on about half our possessions. And, and we're, we're about three possessions away from last week doing that. Most teams are getting 13 possessions in a game. We got to score six or seven of those to beat a good team that can score. And Colorado's a good team and they can score. So we got to slow them down and, and we got to hold them to less than six. And we got to score six or seven. So, and there's a lot of ways to do that, but mostly it's, it's completing passes and getting timely runs and, and, and converting the chains and then scoring when you get in the scoring zone. You know, you know, Nebraska made some unforced errors in that game, three series in a row right before the first half. You know, Colorado scored with 13 points in three minutes. And, um, you know, it's a big part of the game. And, you know, when the game is in the balance, um, you got to make the plays you need to make to win. And that's just football. And so, you know, we didn't do that last week. I mean, our game against Washington State in, in the second and third quarter, if we made a couple plays, it'd been a different, different game. Um, but, you know, that's, that's, that's our challenge. And we got to slow him down. He's been the key to their victories. Um, we got to slow him down, and we got to be more productive as, as an offensive unit. You talked about how great Travis Hunter is. When you have a player like Torrey Horton, where they might line up on each other, do you let them go at each other, or do you try to move Torrey around to get him in a better position? I don't know. You know, I will see what happens, you know, depending on how they decide to play to play uh, Travis, but we'll see. You know, you know, we always move toward around a little bit, and so um, we'll just see. We'll see how the game goes. Um, you know, he played. He played uh, all over the field. The first game, the second game was a much slower tempo game. Nebraska plays slower, and he played mostly to the boundary. So we'll see. We'll see where he plays and. You know, we'll 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 try to put Tory where we need to 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 make sure that he's effective. You've worked with Fred Bartolone in the past. Yeah. Um, what's it mean? You know, you talked early on about the coaches getting opportunity. You see him get this opportunity the last few years with Dion. No, Brett's great. You know, Brett Brett's one of our guys, and and uh, you know he played for Leach and and uh, played in the air raid, and you know. Brett's like a world traveler. He's been in Europe. He's been in Minnesota. He's gone everywhere to coach football. But great coach and a great guy, you know, and he's like family to us. And, um, you know, Dion texted me, and he talked to Leach and wanted to run the air raid when he was at Jackson State and wanted his son to throw for 4,000 yards. And so he wanted to find a way to get that done. So. You know, Brett, Brett uh, is a great friend, and he's a really good coach. He's doing a great job with those receivers. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad he's gotten the opportunity, and I'm, I'm glad Deion's, you know, taking care of him. You know, he's uh, worked with Shador for a couple of years now. Might be radio silence this week, but has he talked about him in the past? I tease him, him all the time. I text him, and, and uh, I was going to text him last night and ask him if I thought I saw him on the field, and I realized it was the defensive coordinator. I was going to ask him if he was related to the defensive coordinator because they looked the same. But um, no, Brett's a great guy, and we text all the time, and um, it'll be good to see him this week. You've always been taking the blame for what happened in Week One against Washington State. How important is it to up the aggression offensively, not just the play calling, but just in general, going when you guys are the underdog, going into a game like this? I mean, we need to do what we need to do to win. And, and uh, 
I mean, we, we're traditionally been very aggressive. And so, um, you know, but I'm, I'm also a realist. I, I mean, I try to play to the strengths of our football team. And, and um, you know, we have a good defense. Our defense didn't play as good last game. Uh, and, um, and so, you know, college football, people can score. And if you can't score, um, you have a problem winning games. And so, you know, and, and we, we typically scored in our history, and, and we're going to have to score about 34 points to win this game. And so that's what we need to do. And, and, and I believe with this football team we can do those things. And so I'm excited about our kids. And, um, and there's, there's not a better group of kids I'd rather go to Boulder with than the kids we got in that locker room. So I'm excited about that. Um, we are going to keep pushing this season to get the type of style of football that we're looking for. And I think we got the kids in the locker room to do it, and this week is the next opportunity for us to do that.